بسمل الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو سال اور خان یوٹیوب چینل وی ٹو ڈے کنٹینیوئنگ دا ٹاپک وی سی دی ورکنگ پرنسپل آف این این پی این ٹرانزسٹر این پی این ٹرانزسٹر سو وچ مینس دیٹ دی ایمیٹر ووڈ بی این دا سینڈوچ لیئر بیس ووڈ بی پی اگین این سو لیٹس جسٹ سی اٹ سو اف دس از مائی این I have drawn it quite bigger with the highest doping right then you have the thin and the least doping P and then the most wet and a moderately doped collector which would be N again so NPN transistor now you know again very well what would be the majority carriers what would be the minority carriers so the majority carriers in the n would be electrons the majority carriers in the p would be holes but a few in number because of the width and because of the concentration as well and similarly over here again electrons the most width but concentration would be less again we have to operate it in the in the active region so the this is the emitter base junction this is the collector base junction so you have to forward bias this one and reverse bias that one so forward biasing means what that the n would be connected to minus and the p would be connected to plus similarly and and we name this as a v e again for instance if this is my emitter terminal this is my base terminal this is my collector terminal similarly this junction that is the pn junction diode again you could say pn this has to be reverse biased so this p is connected to minus n is connected to plus so and let me name this one as v c c why am i naming this like this so this is maybe the source that is connected to the collector When you have a resistance involved in between the two, then you have to name it again. So we'll see the terminologies later on. Anyways, you could write this as V E B. You could write this as V C B. Doesn't matter. It matters when the resistance is involved inside. So what will happen? Again, you have the condition of a forward bias diode, the condition of a reverse bias diode. So have a look. This minus would further repel these electrons. This plus would further attract them. What would happen is that the width of the depletion region would increase, not increase. Sorry, this would uh, you know uh, decrease, and the this is forward biasing. So what would happen? A current would flow. Yes. So V E is forward biasing. V E is forward biasing what the emitter base junction the emitter base junction now what happens and we have a like what happen new base will so V B A T N reduce electrons from from emitter will cross the junction very small amount of electrons will recombine in the base so the thing is that the previous things that we've studied for the holes would now be happening for electrons and that we studied for the electrons would be happening for the holes and the current directions would reverse yes yes so the electrons would be pushed towards the that side by this right similarly it could be attracted by this so again you could say that you have got three possibilities so the three possibilities are what number one is that this electron from the emitter recombines recombines with hole in the base region yes yes but this would be very less why because number one the width is very less so of course the number of charge carriers would be less and then the doping is also less so further the number of holes is less so this is very less right next the second possibility could be that it electron is attracted by the positive terminal of the VE electron is attracted towards plus of what of the VE and the third possibility is that as this is very thin as this has a kinetic energy these electrons the base is thin and it's also lightly doped so it directly crosses into the collector electron directly crosses into collector so these are the three possibilities 
Yes, yes. And most electron may directly go to the kinetic energy, high kinetic energy. Yes, yes. So let n electrons that enter the base out of which 1 minus 1 electrons combined. Okay. So they have given it a proper number over here. They have given it a proper number. And what is that number? That n electrons, let's say, were emitted from the emitter. n electrons emitted from emitter. So, in which what happened is that 1 minus alpha time n combined with the holes. So, 1 minus alpha time n combined with the holes and the remaining alpha times n crosses into the collector. Remaining alpha times n crosses into the collector out of the total n electrons which were emitted from the emitter side. Yes, the 2 to 5 percent are to be combined in the base. Yes, yes. Further, let's say we talk about the J2 as well. So the junction D2 is reverse biased. So we have a reverse bias current. We have a reverse bias current as well. So first let's say if we talk about this. So you would have IE, the emitter current. The emitter current came out to be what? IC plus IB. And you could see so the electrons moved in that side. So the current would be in this side. So which means this is the current direction of IE. Similarly, the electrons moved in this side. So the current direction would be upwards for IB. Similarly, for the collector, the electrons are moving in this side. So the so this would be the correct, so IEC plus IB. So the KCL would suggest what the leaving current is equal to the entering current, IE is equal to IC plus IB. Right? Yes. Name it here. This one crosses into C is I, IC. This one is IB. This one is IB. Recombination is finished. Right? So this that we saw, this was for the forward biased. For the forward biased, a emitter base junction. Now you have what this VCC is doing what? This is reverse biasing the collector base junction. So if this is reverse biasing the collector base junction, so in the reverse biasing you know very well that only the minority charge current would flow. Current due to minority charge carriers only and the minority charge carriers in this case over here are the holes and over here are the electrons so this plus would repel the holes this minus would repel the electron whatever is the case you know that very well so this would be contributing basically to the collector current why because the, uh, the, the this thing is a, a very small amount of doping the holes were not in that significant number so what about the minority carriers so this is very uh, you know what a very very less number so anyways so I see the collector current you would say again is the IC majority which was which is in the other case due to this forward biasing and the minority charge carrying which is ICO this is due to the minority charge carrying which is due to the reverse biasing of the VCC right and this O means what that when the emitter is open circuited emitter is open circuit so for, for considering the open circuit uh, the reverse bias current or the minority current you have to open circuit this VE first so this majority charge current is due to the forward biasing of VEE and this minority charge current is due to the reverse biasing of VCC yes yes so I see and this alpha I've already told you in the previous video what is that okay so this IB is very small basically IB is very small due to the lesser width and lesser doping IB 
is very small so you can sometimes may be neglected so you could write i e to be approximately equal to i c but the proper thing is that you have alpha times right so you have i e is equal to alpha times i c and you could also name it as uh, this i c o plus i c o as well plus i c o as well plus i c o as well isn't it like this i c is equal to alpha times i e no no sorry 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 i c is equal to alpha times i e i c so this is basically alpha times i e plus i c o i c is alpha times i e plus i c o the majority current and then the minority current so i have named it over here I have done this over here. This is basically alpha times I E. Fine? Yes. So, now if you put this over here, you can put this over here. I E is equal to I E is equal to I B plus I C. This is the main relation. The main relation is this one. You can further put this over here in place of I C and whatever the thing. Let me read out anything if I have in the book. So first, let me say, take my notes. My notes, right? So, BJT is a 3 emitter base junction, active region, active region and saturation region and this. So for this, you can also have a, a graphical representation. For this, you can also have a graphical representation like this. If you have URVCB, V E B V C B V E B V C B this one V E B this one right so when this is for when both of them are forward biased so that would be the saturation region we know right this I missed in the introduction video then when we see when this is forward bias and this is reverse so when this is forward and this is reverse so this is the case so over here you have the active mode of operation when both of them are reverse bias so you have the cutoff region and when this is forward and this is reverse so in that you have the inverse active region and this you know very well but i just wanted to mention it somewhere anyways so what do i have next what do i have next electrons from the emitter will be provided uh, and this and that but most will go to the collector when electron goes i e plus ic is equal to ie ic is alpha times ie ic is alpha times ie and alpha is again you know very well if you neglect this if you neglect this uh, you can have alpha is equal to ic upon ie which is what which is the forward current gain which tells you again what fraction of the emitter current is the collector current right so i also ha i also have the the thomas l floyd book over here a small percentage of the total number of electrons join the base recombine so anyways i've already told you all of this you may have you should have these two books boy listed book and the other book what is the other book Thomas L. Floyd book. You also have a relation of a beta. Beta is IC upon IB. We have another factor that is beta. Beta is IC upon IB. We'll study them. But anyways, so beta is IC upon IB. And this is the DC current gain again. And typical values are this equivalent. This is a hybrid parameter HFE. So we will be studying hybrid parameters in the upcoming chapters or maybe in the next course electronics 2. So let this beta be. Just forget about it. Just forget about it. That is it about the NPN transistor. So the PNP transistor was in the uh, in the Robert L. Boyle listed book and the NPN transistor is in the uh, uh, Floyd book. So I have done both. Basically you saw that only the 
polarities change, the direction of the currents change, and the, where we talked about holes, so over here we talk about electrons. Over there we talked about electrons, over here we talk about holes. IE is equal to IC plus IB is this thing. IC is alpha, IE is alpha times IC, this one. IC is alpha times IE. You need to remember this alpha is the forward current gain. It represents what sort, how much have passed came into the collector and how much have been recombined so we have the idea from the value of alpha majority carrier current is, the, is due to the forward biasing this forward biasing and this minority charge carrier current this is due to this reverse biasing so these are basically two diodes and, and what do i say that these are two diodes so if this is an npn transistor so which means that this is an n side of this this is the p side of this similarly you would have over here is the p side of this one you would have an n side of this one so which means that this terminal would now be acting as your emitter this one would be your base this one would be your collector this is for an npn transistor similarly if you have a p n p transistor so for that you would have a p over here this would be your n and similarly so this is your uh, base this is your collector this is your emitter this is the pnp transistor that is it for this video that is it for this video see you in the next video with the next lecture till the next till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye